Welcome into New York Knicks Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. Happy NBA free agency, as we are just a couple hours away from that getting kicked off and us potentially having a new team and a new roster to root for as New York Knicks fans. Remember, guys, to subscribe to the channel because we're going to keep you up to date with everything that happens around the Knicks this offseason. They make a signing, we're going to make a video. Rumors come out, we're making videos. If a trade happens, we are making a video. And we also are going to be live on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to cover NBA free agency, talking about what's going down with the Knicks as well as across the association. So if you are looking for a one-stop shop this summer to keep you up to date with everything surrounding the orange and blue, hit that subscribe button. we got a loaded show to get to talk about today. We'll start with Bruce Brown and everything going around him. Then we're going to talk about Dante DiVincenzo, as it sounds like the Knicks are the favorites to land the big ragu and the big apple. We'll also talk about James Harden and maybe even a little Joel Embiid and Paul George rumors. A lot to get into. Hit that thumbs up icon to start today's show. We would appreciate it. So Bruce Brown is a unrestricted free agent. Does not sound like he's going to return with the Denver Nuggets. And it was being reported via Ian Begley of SNY and The Athletic that Brown is going to sit down and have a meeting with the New York Knicks when NBA free agency opens. But it's not just the Knicks that Bruce Brown is meeting with. The Rockets, Pacers, Mavericks, and Lakers are also other teams that he is expected to have meetings with once NBA free agency opens. For the Knicks, without with a team that doesn't have a lot of cap space, it's going to be hard to compete against the Indiana Pacers or the Houston Rockets. The Knicks do have that non-taxpayer mid-level exception that they could use on Bruce Brown, which is $12.4 million annually. Shout out to my man Josh Hart, who opted into his contract, took a pay cut, hometown discount, and now the Knicks don't have to go into the luxury tax to spend that full non-taxpayer exception, which if they are going to go after Bruce Brown, that's what they would have to do. What type of player is Bruce Brown? He is a Tom Thibodeau guy through and through. If you're not familiar with his game, imagine Josh Hart, like, cloned. That is exactly what Bruce Brown is. They are very similar players. They do the little things. They're scrappy. They knock down big shots. They're good in the fast break. They're good around the rim, and they are good defenders as well. Bruce Brown would fit in perfectly with the New York Knicks. But my thought and my question with, with Bruce Brown is, is it a little bit redundant do you need Bruce Brown and Josh Hart both making 12 plus million dollars to come off the bench and help your unit in that fashion I think he's a good player I don't know though if the Knicks are going to be able to sign him as it sounds like the Indiana Pacers are going to throw the absolute bag at Bruce Brown in NBA free agency the Houston Rockets could also join him Brown's a solid player and he played good in the playoffs for uh, the Denver Nuggets struggled in the first two rounds of the playoffs, only 11.4 points per game. Uh, not only, that's that's a bad way to say it, but only 21.4% from downtown. But as the playoffs went on and the stakes got higher, his three-point percentage got better. 21 up to 30, then 36.4, then 36.8. So he's not a knockdown shooter from three, which he's kind of shown in the regular season that's who he can be. In the playoffs, he's a guy that can hit shots. He's going to give you 11 points per game. He's going to rebound the basketball really good for his size. He's going to be scrappy on the defensive end, playing the passing lanes, and he's just a winner, and he is an adult and a professional. I would love to have him in this locker room. I just don't know how likely it is. When you talk about what he's done the past couple of seasons, he's gotten better each and every season. His best year was this past year where he averaged 11.5 points per game, just under 3.5 assists, 48% from the deck, and nearly 36% from downtown. And what I like about Bruce Brown is he's got a simple game to him, and that's not always a bad thing. He shoots 37.4% on catch-and-shoot opportunities this past year from deep, which is really good. And then when he's 10 feet or less from the basket, he converts at almost a 60% clip, and he gets five of those shots up per night. So he gets downhill, he attacks the basket, and he's a catch-and-shoot player. But we spoke about it just a second ago. I think the fit is a little bit redundant. I think what a guy like Quentin Grimes does, I think a guy – like Josh Hart. What they bring is very similar to Bruce Brown. And people could make the same argument you could say about Dante DiVincenzo. I will disprove that audience coming up in a second. But I think Bruce Brown would make the Knicks better. I wouldn't be mad if they signed him. Heck, I would be happy if the New York Knicks signed Bruce Brown. I just think that they are not going to have enough salary cap space to get it done. Um, 
but I wouldn't mind it at all. We're going to talk about DiVincenzo coming up in just a second, as it sounds like that deal is getting close to being done, and free agency hasn't even started. Hopefully the Knicks don't get fined for tampering yet again. But if you had to pick one of these two guys to sign, who would it be? Is it double D? Is it double B? Let me know. Type their initials down below. And just another reminder, we are going to be live on the channel in a couple of hours, breaking down everything happening across the NBA. Will the Knicks sign Dante DiVincenzo? Could they trade for James Harden? Where are all the top free agents going to sign? And how many are going to the Houston Rockets? We'll keep you up to date. Subscribe to the channel, youtube.com slash Knicks TV, and turn your notifications on. All righty, Dante DiVincenzo, is he already a New York Knicks? Reports are coming out that the Knicks are the favorite to sign Dante DiVincenzo in NBA free agency. And Jake Fisher, just a couple seconds ago, pretty much said it is expected across the NBA that this deal is already done. This is what the San Francisco Chronicle had to say about DiVincenzo. He said, the New York Knicks have emerged as favorites to sign Golden State Warriors free agent guard DiVincenzo. DiVincenzo is seeking a long-term deal that will net him between $9 million and $12 million a year, according to a source. His preference is to continue his NBA career on the East Coast. Signing with the Knicks would also allow the 26-year-old native of Delaware to reunite with former Villanova teammate Jalen Brunson and Josh Hart. Even Ian Begley yesterday on the putback via SNY Awesome Show. Check it out. Begley says, odds are that they will, will it, that they will, if they get the money right, I think they'll get Dante DiVincenzo. Also, this is what Fisher said. He said, all indications suggest that former Warriors guard DiVincenzo will be headed to the Knicks, teaming up with Brunson and Josh Hart. I honestly hope this deal gets done. Does DiVincenzo make you a title contender? No. Does DiVincenzo help the New York Knicks? Yes, the Knicks are better with Dante DiVincenzo. Does he fix all your problems? No, not at all. But I think he helps you improve on the margins. I think he makes you a better three-point shooting team, more scrappy players on defense. And anytime you get a Villanova Wildcat, it seems like they play pretty good for the New York Knicks. I tweeted this out the other day, and, and it got, got kind of hot on the Twitter streets, and a lot of people were replying. I was just sick and tired, and I mean, talking to some of you guys as well, unfortunately. Actually, not unfortunately. I don't like, I don't mind having different opinions. I think that's best for conversation. But a lot of people are saying the Knicks don't need another 6'4 undersized guard. Well, I said this. Jalen Brunson had to play 48 minutes in Game 5 versus the Miami Heat for New York to win. And as soon as he came out in Game 6, for four minutes, the Miami Heat went on a nine-point swing. Deuce McBride was running the offense. He was pounding the piss out of the basketball as the shot clock ran down. Nobody could create a shot for themselves or anyone else. I think we need to stop acting like the Knicks don't need another guard. I understand Emmanuel quickly was injured, but you know what's crazy? Injuries aren't going to be off next season, and they're not going to be off in the playoffs. If one injury makes you derail your offense... That's a problem. The Knicks have two guys on this roster. This is what I said, that have guard skills in Jalen Brunson and Emmanuel quickly. Quentin Grimes, he plays shooting guard, but he's a wing. Josh Hart is a wing, and R.J. Barrett is a wing, and Deuce McBride is an undersized wing that has to play at the guard spot. I would personally like another guard on this team that doesn't have to force his way to the basket to score, defends, creates for others, while also shooting 39%. From three, we know Jalen Brunson is a good guard and has guard skills. Even Emmanuel quickly a little bit struggled in that Cleveland Cavaliers series. And even before he got hurt in that Miami Heat series, which definitely changed things, he struggled a little bit. I think having a backcourt mate like Dante DiVincenzo that could kind of lighten the ball carrier, uh, ball handling load, excuse me, could help out a guy like quickly because we've seen it. Quickly plays great with Brunson because he gets to play out off the ball. While DiVincenzo was not a point guard, he can handle the ball. And if you remember back in those Villanova days, he was a primary ball handler. We got more juice, huge juice now, coming from Brian Windhorst of James Harden. We'll talk about that in one second. But we have an awesome deal for you guys today. Shirts are on sale, but you can get them 20% off. We've got our brand new black Knicks Now Real One t-shirt. We also have the classic blue one. If you go to chatsports.com slash real Knicks and you use the code SUMMERVIBES20, that is SUMMERVIBES20, all one word, you are going to get 
20% off. Just use the code and the link right here. Save 20% off if you want to get your Knicks Real One shirt today. The deal won't last forever, so take advantage of it. Chatsports.com slash Real Knicks. Code Summer Vibes 20 and save yourself 20%. All righty, so I didn't plan about talking about really James Harden, what Brian Windhorst had to say, but Woj this morning on ESPN once again mentioned the Knicks as a Harden trade destination. And now Brian Windhorst is saying, if the price is right, I think the Knicks would consider it. I will just leave it at that. If the price is right, I think the Knicks would consider it. What does Wendy no, Lord, oh Lord, here we go. If you missed the live show yesterday, you know I'm not that big of a fan of James Harden. Bobby Marks, who used to be a general manager in the NBA, he went on ESPN yesterday, and he showed up this trade idea as what the Knicks could make a move for James Harden. He had Evan Fournier going out to the Sixers, Isaiah Hartenstein going to the Sixers, and Emmanuel quickly going to the Sixers with the New York Knicks bringing in James Harden the former MVP. So this is what that deal would look like. Harden is a Nick. Quickly, Fournier and Hardenstein are no longer Knicks. Am I intrigued by the fact that there's no picks involved? Yes. Am I absolutely sick to my stomach that I'm even thinking about trading Emmanuel quickly? Absolutely. I'll give you my thoughts on Bobby Mark's trade idea around the corner. I want to hear from you first, though. Would you make this trade? Type A for accept. Type D for decline. I want to hear from all the real ones down in the comment section. Do you want James Harden in the Big Apple? Sound off for me down below. I am honestly not interested in James Harden. I've thought about it long and hard last night. I, I watched a lot of James Harden highlights from the 2022-2023 season. While it would be awesome to have potentially the two best point guards in the Eastern Conference on your same team, the Knicks could use another ball handler like James Harden. They could use a veteran. I just don't think he fits Knicks culture. I don't think Tom Thibodeau would like to coach James Harden. I, I don't know if my mental health can wa help stand watching James Harden and Julius Randle on the same basketball court. And I honestly don't want the ball really taken out of Jalen Brunson's hands. I, I don't, I'm not going to say Brunson is better than Harden at this point, um, but I'm not, not saying it. Um, I, I, you guys know how I feel about Jalen Brunson. I don't want to mess that up with this James Harden process. It, it, it's just unbelievable. And this is even a thought. Uh, I don't think a lot of people want to do it, though. But, 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 I am keeping my eyes on a three-team deal with the Los Angeles Clippers. Maybe Barrett goes to the Sixers, Harden goes to the Clippers, and Paul George comes to the Knicks. I'm not saying no. I'm not saying no. If you had to have a player on your team next year, though, as Paul George has been linked to the Knicks, we've talked about it on the channel that the Knicks have made contact with the Clippers via Ian Begley. Who would you rather have? Is it James Harden? Is it Paul George? Type their initials of your player who you want in Madison Square Garden. Remember, guys, subscribe, sub subscribe, subscribe, and turn your notifications on. We're going to be live in four hours, uh, three hours. Three hours. Three hours. Good math. We'll be live in three hours on the channel. We're going live at about 5 p.m. Eastern time. That'd be right. 4 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Eastern time. We'll see you then. Hit the thumbs up icon. Let's go.